Good morning everybody, Josh here with Input Mapper. I uh, wanted to take a few minutes this morning to kind of explain to everybody. Uh, I guess a lot of people have read the Sony press release about their official uh, DualShock 4 dongle that's coming for PC support. And I wanted to kind of clear up some misinformation that people seem to be having with that. I even read the Sony press release where people are responding that you know, finally they're bringing native DualShock 4 support to games and um, people are getting a lot of the wrong ideas about this and some of that's Sony's fault I guess because they don't really explain it too well what it's meant to do and some of that is just a lot of people's misconception as to, you know, what the DualShock is and, you know, why it does and does not work with certain games and what the differences are between uh, direct input and X input. So uh, I'm going to try to clear some of that up for some people. Um, at least the people that are willing to listen to it, I guess. Um, but, I mean, I guess the first thing to understand is that the reason why no, you know, official uh, DualShock 4 drivers have come out is because there are no drivers to come. I mean, the DualShock 4 is a direct input device, which means its drivers have been part of Windows or at least DirectX since DirectX has been part of Windows since like 1995. So if you were to pull a computer out from, you know, that was still running Windows 95 or 98, as long as it had uh, DirectX installed on it, you would be able to use your DualShock 4 with it because it's, you know, direct input is a standard and that standard has had drivers included with Windows. It's a, it's the first, uh, one of the first gaming uh, controller input standards that have been around. And one of the main reasons it is still around is because the DualShock 4, like a lot of other devices that are still out there, have more inputs, um, functionality, uh, channels than the competing standard, which is X input, uh, then that standard will handle. Um, so, you know, so devices like, you know, HOTAS, flight sticks, they have, you know, like 60 plus buttons on them. Um, bunch of axes, axes, knobs, hat switches, all kinds of stuff. These need the direct input standard. Um, and for that reason, the direct input standard is not going anywhere. Uh, X inputs the pretty much the king of the land for games, but there will always be a need for something else for you know these complicated devices. Um, so I mean, we have the DualShock 4, and it has these additional channels like the touchpad. Um, it has gyros, accelerometers, the LED bar. Uh, all these additional channels are something that don't fit into the X input standard, um, meaning there is no you know one to one mapping that's part of that standard that it could fit into. So the DualShock 4 was never going to be able to be an X input device on its own. Um, the only way that you know it did have a chance was for you know third party developers like myself to you know kind of split these extra channels out into uh, you know areas that could be used that's outside of this X input standard like the the touchpad we turn that into a mouse the light bar uh, that's application driven for stuff like you know battery level stuff like that um, so I mean we were able to create a virtual 360 device to map this device to uh, Sony never would have done that because even though you know, we're creating a mapping that allows this device to show up in X input games. It still doesn't change the fact that the game sees it as an X input device and that it's showing like button prompts that are A, B, X, Y as opposed to circle, triangle, square, cross. Um, and the, you know, any references to the gamepad in the game are usually as an Xbox controller. And that's, you know, if Sony were to release their own emulation program, that's something they would never go for. Uh, there's so much, uh, there's so much nepotism when it comes to these companies that, you know, they're, they're very particular about how games refer to their controller devices. Um, 
the, these companies, you know, Microsoft and Sony are constantly at each other's throats suing each other for infringements. So uh, a Sony gamepad in games with official drivers being recognized as an Xbox controller is something that would have never flown. Um, uh, not only from a technological standpoint, but, you know, from an actual legal standpoint as well. So for that reason, uh, you know, these third-party tools, they were always an inevitability and a requirement and are going to continue to be so, um, so long as Sony creates controllers that have additional features that Xbox controllers don't have. And I'm glad they do because stuff like, you know, the touchpad and all that would not have been possible if Sony had decided to release a X input controller with their PlayStation 4. And even so, Sony wouldn't have wanted to pay the licensing fees and all that required to get a controller and then, you know, drop their uh, kind of iconic uh, circle, square, triangle, cross, you know, controller layout and all that stuff. So uh, it was just never going to happen. Um, excuse me. So what that means, I mean, with the dongle coming out is these games that already support the, uh, the DualShock 4, and that is, you know, where the games might make use of the light bar or the, you know, the button prompts will actually show up as the PlayStation 4 button prompts. Um, those games up until this dongle have only been able to do it via USB, and that's just because the gamepad itself um, the, the Bluetooth enumeration doesn't expose it properly uh, to these games in order for them to realize that it's a DualShock 4. And this dongle, um, it's little more than just an actual Bluetooth adapter uh, with a couple extra, you know, hardware, um, with a couple extra hardware uh, features built in that'll actually decode these HID packets. Uh, to make it at a hardware level understand the light bar and the uh, the axes and all that stuff um, So this this dongle will act as a middleman and allow these games to see this wireless controller and Bring a you know a wireless functionality to these games that were previously just USB for that support. So um, That really doesn't affect us much at all because this project has always been about um, supporting the games that are X input only uh, <coughs> excuse me, I should have a cough button. Um, but, I mean, we've always been about those games that are X input only. And uh, since Sony will never be uh, releasing an X input emulator for their device, it, you know, it doesn't change us at all, really. Um, but what it does do is it gives us an opportunity, since at a hardware level, they're going to be decoding a lot of the, the, the gamepad's functionality, um, such as the light bar, the touchpad, possibly the audio jack. Um, I hesitate saying possibly because uh, if, you know, Sean Murray's interviews are any indication, people take possibly and, uh, you know, start etching it in stone as absolute fact, but... Uh, at the risk of doing that, um, possibly take the audio jack and expose it to a input app, input mapper uh, application, so we can route Windows audio to it. Um, I won't know more until I get my hands on the device and hunt around and try to find whatever API Sony's releasing. Um, it's another thing I don't know if Sony is releasing the API for this device only to verified publishers or if there's some sort of a uh, verification or a, like I don't know like a product verification that stuff has to go through in order to receive the API if so input mapper will never get one because they don't want their controller associated with the X input go, going back to that thing again um, so it's it's it it's fluid it's a fluid situation right now I won't know what's going on until I get my hands on one and research it you know having physically model to this research and you know figure out how that device works um, but I mean it could make things a lot easier in the back end uh, not having to decode these HID packets manually um, so we'll see how that plays out uh, 
for most users, it probably won't change anything. Input Mapper will still do the same thing it does. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of people might want to skip this adapter uh, because apparently the adapter, it only works with one controller per adapter. So if you have multiple controllers, you would need multiple adapters, and that sounds like a nightmare. Um, so hopefully that cleared some things up. If people have questions, uh, I did create a blog on the website um, that covers a lot of this. And uh, if people want to jump in there, you know, discuss things and come up with ideas, or if there are uh, people that already have their hands on one of these that, you know, have taken it apart and deconstructed it and seen how it works and want to want to kind of share what they've figured out, um, I welcome it. Uh, so uh, that's it, guys, and uh, thanks a lot. Have a good one.